When developing a web service, it's natural to test it by sending all kinds of HTTP requests to it and examining what's returned. In PHP Storm, you can do it directly in the code editor. In this video, we'll use the example project. You can find the link to its GitHub repository and all the details in the description. Let's start with the very basics. In PHP Storm, HTTP requests are stored in HTTP files. So let's create one right away. Now, type the URL. For simple requests such as get, this is already enough. Then, press Alt plus Enter, select Run, and you're done. The request is executed and we can view the response in the Run tool window. Insert your HTTP file. You can create as many requests as needed. Type pound 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 that will act as a separator and start creating the second request. This time, we'll speed things up a little by using a live template. To view all available templates, Press Command plus J, Control plus J on Windows. You can choose the template here or just type it in the editor. For our case, we'll use GTR. The template will expand into a GET request and we only need to provide the remaining details. Notice that as soon as we run the request, PHP Storm automatically creates a temporary run configuration for it. Now, if you change something in your endpoint, you can test the changes right away without switching context. Press Ctrl plus R, Shift plus F10 on Windows, and the request will rerun. To quickly test a particular method and compare what's returned between requests, use scratches. They behave similarly to regular physical files, but are not stored inside the project. To get started, create a new HTTP scratch file and compose your request inside. Now, when you run it, the information on the received response will be added directly under the request. Run it again, and the link to the next response will be added here, too. What's more, you can click the button in the editor gutter and compare the received responses on the spot via the Differences viewer. If you feel that a composed request belongs to the project and want to keep it, select Refactor, Move File, and move it to a file inside the project. Your request files are regular project files, which means that you can commit them to VCS, share with your team, and use as a reference suite for testing or documenting your web API. To recap what we've achieved so far, we can use Requests History. Click the link in the editor's top right corner and view the latest 50 executed requests. From here, you can rerun any request or open the response file in the editor for further examination. Now to more complex things. What if your web service requires authorization? In your HTTP requests, you can provide the authorization header, the authentication method, and the required credentials. Keeping the credentials together with the request does not seem right though. In fact, we can extract them into environment variables, then put them in place as soon as the request runs and do even more. Since we may want to target different servers with our request, Let's start with replacing the host with host, then replace the user and password values with user and password. This way, we've turned these values into variables. Now, let's define these variables. First, we need to create a new file and name it http-client.env.json. Inside the file, we define the environment standing for a specific server to target and the variables specific for this environment. We can already run the request to make sure that it's operable, but we are still not authorized, of course. While we could provide the variables for username and password the environment file too, it's probably not a good idea. We want to keep private things private and not share them with the project. So let's create another file. This time we name it http-client.private.env.json. As the name implies, this file is intended to hold sensitive data so it gets ignored by a VCS by default. Inside the file, we define the environment again, now providing the username and password. Our request is ready to run. Since its values are now externalized, your teammates can reuse it and tailor for their environments. Until now, we've been primarily composing and running requests, but let us now look at responses. In HTTP client, you both see what the web service returned and react to it programmatically. Let's look at this request. 
When we run it, our web service returns this JSON response. Now, we'll compose a simple script that will modify it, so that we can send the modified data back to the server by using the second POST request. Response handler scripts are written in JavaScript and executed as soon as a response is received. Inside the script, we'll start with referring to the response object, which contains the information about the received response. This way, we grab the response body JSON and modify its key's value. Next, we refer to the client object, which stores the session metadata until you restart PHP Storm, and save the modified response body to a new myResponse global environment variable. Let's rerun the request so that the response gets modified and saved. In the second POST request, which sends the JSON data to the server, we can now set the myResponse variable as the request body and run it to store the data on the server. To make sure that everything worked as expected, we can now rerun the GET request, and it will return modified data. It would be even better if PHP Storm performed this check automatically for us, so that we don't need to compare values visually. Let us enhance our script so that it includes the actual test. To do this, we use the test method. Here, we start with the name of the test, and then provide the function that runs the test. Inside the function, we use the assert method, which checks the value of the response body JSON key and output the error message if the condition is not met. This way, we can add other conditions here too, for example, checking the response status. Let's run the request and observe the test results on the Tests tab. Now, if we modify a request so that it returns anything different, our tests will predictably fail, and we can easily see what went wrong and fix it. This sums up the major HTTP client capabilities. See our docs for even more, and make sure to check out our blog from time to time to keep up with the latest features.